Greetings, and welcome to Brand West's first quarter 2020 financial results conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to your host, John LaGorge. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm pleased to welcome everyone here to our call this morning uh, for our first quarter financial results. I've got uh, CEO William Trainer and uh, CFO Dan Buckle here uh, with myself. Um, before we get started, I need to notify our listeners of forward-looking statements. This call will contain forward-looking statements, which reflect the expectations of management regarding Grand West's future growth, results of operations, performance and business prospects and opportunities, the words believes, anticipates, plans, expects, intends, uh, projects, estimates, and similar expressions are intended to identify forward-looking statements. These statements reflect management's current expectations regarding future events and operating performance and speak only as of the date of this presentation. Such forward-looking statements are based on a number of material factors and assumptions. This call does not form part of any offer of securities or constitute a solicitation of any offer to purchase or subscribe for securities. The sole purpose of this call is strictly for information. And with that, I will turn it over to Dan to review the financial results for the quarter. Thanks, Tom. Good morning, everyone. I will spend some time going through some specific highlights for 2019 first quarter results before William provides us with an update on the overall business, how we are dealing with the current COVID-19 pandemic, and where things are headed for the remainder of 2020. For the sake of this call, I will round figures to the nearest thousand. I will also make reference to adjusted EBITDA and other non-GAAP measures. For the calculation of adjusted EBITDA and other non-GAAP measures, please refer to the Q1 MDNA, which is available on CDA. We had deliveries of six vicinity buses during the first quarter of 2020, compared to 10 buses in Q1 of 2019. Bus, aftermarket parts, and other revenue for the first quarter of 2020 was 3,967,000, compared to 5,733,000 in the first quarter of 2019. Our gross margin for these sales was 92,000, or 2% of revenue for the current quarter, compared to a gross margin of 1,340,000, or 23% of revenue for Q1 of 2019. Gross margin for the current quarter was lower due to fixed cost allocations over a lower number of buses, as well as the deliveries of our first Buy America buses. Our margins for Buy America buses will increase over time, similar to the evolution of our Canadian margins, which, excluding overhead, have increased yearly since 2017. Adjusted EBITDA loss for the quarter was 1,278,000 compared to an adjusted EBITDA of 151,000 in Q1 of 2019. We had a net loss of 1,730,000 for the three months ended March 31st, 2020, compared to a net loss of 680,000 in the comparative period of 2019. Overall, the fundamentals of our operations are still very positive, and we remain positioned well for future growth and profitability. Now, I'll pass it along to Will to elaborate on this a bit more and to provide a corporate update and business overview. Thank you, Dan, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's only been a few weeks since our last call, and the message is the same. We are executing on our plan to deliver a minimum of 150 buses this year. This should bring us into a very positive financial position by year end, and we are on track. Our shop is operating at full capacity, preparing 34 buses for delivery acceptance to BC Transit, our overseas operation facility is in full production. We do see light at the end of this corona crisis. Our sales team have been notified that some of the RSP tenders that were to be released in Q1 are now getting the clearance to be issued. Many transit authorities were funded for their purchases prior to the crisis and now will be placing orders for the replacement units. 
We do operate a lean business model that utilizes global manufacturing practices, and this now has proven to be an advantage in our market space. Our USA manufacturing partner is still idle, but has plans to reopen soon. Our supply chain is currently able to provide us with the necessary components for production and aftermarket parts sales. Grand West remains well positioned to serve our customers. Credit lines remain active, allowing the company access to capital. Overall, the North American market is opening for business, and we're excited to get our sales team back on the road. We have over 450 vicinity buses in operation, and now, more than ever, our mid-sized vicinity bus makes sense. As stated in our past call, the real excitement is with our new vicinity LT. The first units are now rolling off the assembly line, and we should be able to start our Across Canada tour in July. Customers are lined enough to see this product. It is a winner. The cutaway market is three to four times the size of the heavy-duty bus market. And our vicinity LP is designed to dominate this market. It's vastly superior and priced competitively. And we see a runway of producing over a thousand of these units per year. The heavy duty transit buses can be maintained to operate for 20 years. The cutaway has a limited life of three to five years and cannot economically be maintained to operate past this. Operators need to replace this vehicle, and a vicinity light will be their choice. We are excited. Please check it out on our website. I'll now turn it over to uh, to John. Thanks, Will. Uh, we'll be taking uh, questions now, but can you uh, open up the, uh, the line? Thank you, sir. At this time, we'll be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. One moment, please, while we pull for questions. Our first question today comes from Kurt Seuss of Capital Fine Partners. Please proceed with your question. Well, Will and John, uh, thank you for your presentation today. Uh, my questions are centered around what I consider to be a game-changing announcement for the company, the $40 million order uh, in the U.S. on February the 7th. Um, sort of a series of questions that I think are all uh, together what it took to crack such a significant order uh, in the U.S., um, why the stock market is not understanding uh, what the significance of uh, this order is. Uh, it seems that the stock is down about 50% in market cap uh, since you made this announcement. There seems to be some question around the confidence in how secure that uh, order is and uh, what measures are the company taking to tell our story in uh, in the U.S. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. You know, that order uh, was worked on for a long period of time. Uh, we have a close relationship with the Alliance Bus Group, uh, and uh, to get an order of that size, a 92 bus order, um, is pretty significant. You, you need to have the... Uh, you know, you need to have the trust in the customer. You gotta, you gotta show that you can uh, maintain the product, uh, uh, deliver the product, uh, and have a have a product that's going to operate for a, a very large uh, um, operation like this. Um, and we pass all of that uh, all of that criteria. 
Um, you know, the customer that, that bought it, uh, we're, we're not naming names of who, who the customer is uh, for um, uh, comparative purposes and uh, uh, just uh, uh, NBA, we can't uh, announce who, who the customer is, but uh, um, it is a very large operator. Um, and I think that that's really going to open up the market for us in that segment. Um, our, our bus is very competitively priced. Uh, and operates extremely well. Um, the customer is excited to get the to get the product. Um, as the U.S. has been shut down um, uh, fairly hard, uh, the customer needs the product and is uh, awaiting uh, for it. Um, I hope that answers most of the questions. Did I miss anything here, John? Yeah, that's on that part. And then if you're talking about you know looking for the exposure, um, in the past we've uh, we, you know attended quite a few. Uh, U.S.-based uh, conferences, investment conferences that have worked well for us. Um, obviously, things have changed a little bit here, so uh, we're just evaluating our best uh, uh, best opportunities to uh, to meet with new uh, potential investors and uh, share the story uh, currently. Well, thank you very much. Uh, very excited about the future of Grand West, especially in the U.S. market, now that you've had uh, a way of penetrating into a, a market that I know you've looked to uh, break into uh, for a long time and uh, surprised that the market hasn't recognized uh, this uh, incredible achievement, in my opinion. Well, thank you. Thanks, Ted. Thanks very much. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. We have a question from Jeff Powell, a private investor. Please proceed with your question. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Um, thanks for the uh, the update. Um, I had a couple of questions. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead with one and jump back into the queue uh, for now. But um, on the finished goods component, I saw something in the financials pertaining to $14.2 million in that category. Um, my question is, how many buses does that represent? Have they already been sold? Um, not delivered, and, and how many of those? Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about sort of what size buses those are, what types they are. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the question. This is Andy. Um, so I don't want to get into the actual number of buses that we have in our finished goods inventory. Um, we do expect to uh, work our way through those buses during this year. Uh, we did have a slowdown a little bit when the COVID hit, uh, particularly with, with some private customers um, that, that have definitely spread out when those will be delivered. Um, and we, all, we do have a higher trade cost uh, with our U.S. production as well and our U.S. inventory. But, yeah, it, there is $14.2 million there. And, you know, when, when it's called a finished good for us, you know, that, that for us is a bus that's drivable. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bus that's 100% complete. Um, so there is still some work being completed on those buses. But as I say, uh, our intention is to work through that bus and enjoy it. Okay, thanks. Let me, let me ask one more question then. Um, uh, working capital, a little over $11 million, including just under $3 million in cash. Um, are there any kind of restrictions on that working capital? Do you feel that that's a sufficient enough um, amount of resources to execute on your plan for the balance of this year? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's a good question that every company is asking um, during this pandemic. And it's, I will say this, that we have – Great support from our banks right now, and I've been working you know, pretty diligently with them, going through cash flow modeling just to ensure that we have the liquidity that we need. Um, and you know, they've they've been very they've been very a very good partner in helping to free up liquidity within our current credit facilities. Uh, but 
No, the way we're looking at the year uh, panning out is that uh, we do have the liquidity that's necessary right now. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, right now, it's, it's obviously um, interesting for every company, but, yeah, definitely right now we think that we're going to come out of this uh, a fairly strong company with the number of actual fixed orders that we have. Uh, particularly, you know, we're working to uh, – fairly large order right now that we'll be delivering fairly soon, um, as, as Will alluded to, and then the 92 bus order at the end of the year, um, which, which definitely will help us out with liquidity. Okay, so again, you're you're confident that you're in a good position right now, um, that you don't have to, I know you, you did a, a small adventure raise recently. Um, but you feel that that's sufficient for, for the foreseeable future, what you have on your on your uh, availability? Uh, yes, right now, yes. Okay, I have one more question. Um, can you talk some more about the Buy America? Um, you indicated that you've delivered uh, or you have five, five orders, or maybe you've delivered five, I'm not sure about that, and then something about receiving further orders for, I believe it was 13 buses. I'm not sure if I got that correctly. I'm, I'm curious uh, if you can sort of just clarify that as well as maybe talk about um, whether the these are the same customer or there's some new customers in, in those numbers. If you could just expand on that, um, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Jeff. I'll, I'll take this question. Yeah, no, Buy America, we're excited. We got five units uh, delivered to uh, to customers in the U.S. Um, we have a couple more that will that should go out shortly. Um, you know, the, the stall with the COVID um, in the manufacturing facility down in the U.S. has definitely uh, slowed down our, uh, our USA Buy America deliveries. Um, you're correct in stating that we do have some more units. Uh, I think it is approximately 13 units uh, to deliver, um, but we need to get the uh, the U.S. up and uh, uh, functioning uh, fully uh, at this point in time. Um, so we are expected to deliver those units, um, but uh, we need full operation up in the U.S. And it's just, you know, we're in that Michigan area, and Michigan's one of the hardest hit areas. Uh, the factory was just starting to open back up, um, which we're excited for, and then uh, along come some other cases, and uh, uh, they had to shut down. Um, so hopefully, you know, within the next 30 days, we, we're hoping to see some clarity on getting getting that up and running. But, uh, no, uh, the first five units getting delivered is, is a major milestone for us, um, getting acceptance to the customer, getting uh, um, – Getting uh, the units actually to meet the uh, the criteria for the Buy America, um, and uh, we're on track with the other ones. Hopefully, that answers your question. Okay, great. Th thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate your time. Okay, yeah, thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. There appears to be no additional questions at this time. I'd like to turn the call back to John LaGorge for closing remarks. Great. Thank you so much. I uh, just would like to uh, say thank you to everybody that uh, joined us today in, in this call. Uh, if you have any further questions, you know where to find me and, uh, and, and the team. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you for Q2. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. This concludes today's conference. You may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.